In this episode, we're setting up a brand new control rig for our UE5 mannequin, specifically for the head and neck. And this way I can hold right click and I can look down and look down at the ground. I can look up into the air. I can look to the left. I can look to the right. If I release right click, it's right back to normal. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode, and this is just a quick tutorial episode on how to set up a control rig from scratch. I'm the furthest thing from an expert in control rig, and we're not even setting up any controls in this episode. But regardless, I found that control rig works great for the specific aim I have in mind, which is integrating our player's ability to look somewhere directly with the atom graph with whatever else is going on with the player. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to give the player a sense of presence, and an easy way to do that is to make the player character actually respond to where you're focused, where you're looking in the world. In episode 30, the fireball episode, we initially set up some functionality such that I could hold the right click and I could actually aim the character in a particular direction. But it was specifically just for the upper body and it didn't do anything with the head and neck. And realistically, if the player's turning their upper body slightly toward whatever they're looking at, they'd also train their head and their neck, they're basically their eyes at whatever they're looking at. And so to solve this, I figure it's a perfect use case to building a control rig from the ground up. It's very simple, but we'll integrate that into our anim graph. And so whatever animation is playing, it'll just seamlessly blend with our control rig. Some of the stuff in this episode comes from episode 28. Other stuff comes from episode 30, the fireball episode, but I'm going to walk you through everything that we did in those episodes. So even if you just stick with this episode, you should have everything you need to set up what we're going to set up. So here are the key concepts for today and just the basics of control rig. We're setting it up, we're integrating it with our anim graph, and then the key node that we're using within the control rig to actually control which way our bones are rotating is something called the offset transform. So to start this episode, we're going to navigate to our content drawer, and we're going to navigate over to our characters folder, into our mannequins, and then into our rigs. And this is where all existing control rigs currently live. So we're going to create a new control rig right here. So we're going to right click, we're going to go up to animation, and then control rig. And the parent rig is the base control rig class. And this is going to be called CR head and neck. And we'll go into that. And the first thing we need to do is we need to specify what skeleton is this control rig actually going to use. And for that, we got to go over to our rig hierarchy over here. And we have to import our hierarchy. So we have to select our skeletal mesh right here. And I'm going to select our SKM Manny, which is the default mannequin, the male mannequin, but you can select whichever one you like. And now we've got Manny in there. You heard me say earlier that we only want this control rig to be activated if our player is using right click, meaning the player is deliberately aiming towards something. And so to handle that, I'm going to create a new Boolean variable, and that variable is going to determine whether or not the control rig is on or off. So our variables here, I'll just hit plus sign, and I'll call this variable aiming. And we're going to need to control this outside of the control rig. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it instance editable and exposed on spawn. And so I can get aiming, drag that in as a variable get, and then we're going to connect this up to a branch node. And all the nodes in the control rig here, they just look a little bit different. And then we're going to create a second variable for rotation. And this is the rotation that's going to define how much each of our bones of our head and our neck are rotated towards whatever target they're looking at. And so I'll hit plus sign here, and I'm going to name this our bone rotation. And for this one, I'm going to make it into a rotator. And then it's also going to be, if I select it, instance, editable, and exposed on spawn. Let's compile and save this. And so now what we got to do is if get aiming is true, and obviously we got to hook up to this control rig in our atom graph, but we'll do that later. If get aiming is true, then we want to use this bone rotation variable in order to adjust our head and our neck bones. So from true, this is where we're going to use the offset transform node. And it's of type bone. We just need to select the bone that we're transforming. And this is going to be, if we search for neck, we can choose neck 01. And I can expand our transform here because we don't need to change our translation, our scale. We just need to change the rotation. Now here's the challenge. The rotation here, it's something called a quaternion. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Quaternion is another way of storing rotation data, and I don't understand it all that well. But it's different than the rotator that we have here. So somehow we need to translate our rotator into this quaternion. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to drag out a pin and we're going to say from rotator. So we can make a quaternion from a rotator. And then we can drag in a reference to our bone rotation and we can connect it up right here. But we don't only want to rotate just the neck zero one, right? There's also a second neck bone and there's also our actual head that we need to rotate. And so what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to duplicate this two other times. And this one's going to be neck zero two, so neck zero two and duplicate it once more, connect this up here, and this one's gonna be our head. And then I'll take our from rotator here, and we're gonna take our rotation that we're passing in, and we're gonna split that across all three bones so that they're equally rotated. 
So I'll connect this up to the rotation here. I'll connect this up to the rotation down there. And as long as you have auto compile on here, you don't even need to compile and save, or I guess you need to save still. So now the question is, how do we get our bone rotation that's actually gonna drive how much each of these bones rotate? And so for that, we gotta go back to what we set up back in episode 28 and then episode 30. And that's in our anim graph. So let's go over back to our content. And in the very first episode of this series, actually it was episode three, but the very first episode where we did something, I put my anim blueprint into this core folder here. But go into your third person character's animation blueprint. And I'm gonna start by walking you through what we did in episode 28. So this is gonna be really fast if you've already done this. So if we go to event graph and then we come down here. So you should already have this event blueprint update animation and then it does a sequence of things. And what we did in episode 28 is we added our fourth pin here. And what this is doing is every single tick of our anim graph, it's assessing whether or not we need to adjust stain. And then we also modified this in episode 30. So I'll go into this and basically just tracing through this function. So all it does is it checks whether or not our right mouse button is being pressed. And we set that up on our third person character. And then at false, it sets our spine rotation back to zero, 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 but it does that over a small amount of time just so it doesn't suddenly snap our spine. So it's not like an instantaneous spine rotation back to normal. But if our right mouse button is being held down, then it gets the rotation of the camera and the way it does that, let me just show you this macro. So it gets our player controller and it compares the player controller rotation to our character's rotation and it gets the delta rotator. And then for each of these, what it does is it divides by five, these is negative five, and it does that to split the rotation over five separate spine bones. And I also clamp that rotation between negative 15 and 15 just so that the player can't turn more than 75 degrees to the left or 75 degrees to the right. And that sets our spine rotation, but again, it sets it over some period of time. It's a very short time, but basically the player doesn't instantaneously turn in that direction. So that gives us our spine rotation variable every single tick that our right mouse button is being held down. And that's the very same variable that we're going to pass in. We're going to connect that up to our bone rotation here, and then that's going to adjust our neck bones and our head. So the way we're going to do that is back in our animation blueprint. We have to navigate over to our anim graph. And depending on if you've been following along with this series, you might not have some of this stuff, but I almost guarantee that you have a control rig already here. And this is the control rig that comes by default with the UE5 mannequin. And what this control rig is doing is it's doing an IK trace down to the ground and it's checking to see, okay, should our player's feet be adjusted and legs and hips based on where the ground actually is. So if the player is stepping on a stair, one foot's gonna be higher up than the other that's not stepping on a stair. And so we're gonna do something very similar with our second control rig that we built this episode. So what I can do is I can right click and I can search for a control rig, select that and then put it right here, connect this up here, connect this up there. And then we have to specify, okay, what control rig class is this actually using? And we have to select the one that we just created here, CR head and neck. And then the next thing we have to do is in order to get these two variables exposed in our actual anim graph, we need to select aiming, use pin, and bone rotation, use pin. And then when we do that, they both show up here. And so for bone rotation, we can get the same variable that we previously set up first in episode 28. So I classified that under spell casting and that's our spine rotation here. So I'm gonna get that and then I'll connect that up here. I'll just make a little bit more space and I'll put our variables right there. Now for aiming, how are we getting that variable? So for that, I'm actually gonna go into my third person character blueprint just to show you that. So our right click being held down, that's really, really simple. So all I did was I searched for right mouse button and I got our mouse event here, and then I set up a Boolean variable on our third person character blueprint. If right mouse button is pressed, then it's true, and if released, then it's false. That simple. And then back in our animation blueprint, all we need to do is we need to reference our third person character. Now previously we set that up. If I go back to the event graph, let me just come up here. So in addition to setting up just a character reference, and this is there by default in the animation graph, we also just did this to set up a third person character reference. So back in our anim graph, I'm gonna come down here again, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a reference to our third person character, get, and then I can get a reference to right mouse button active. Drag that over here, and then if that's true, I just connect that up to aiming, then we're aiming. So now I'm going to compile and save, and we are gonna test this out. Okay, so now I'm just facing forward, I'm not doing anything yet, but then I hold my right mouse button and move to the right, and the head moves down, and then I move to the left, and the head moves up, and then I move up, and the head moves to the right, and I move down, and the head moves to the left. Not exactly what we wanted to have happen, right? So the problem here is that we need to switch a couple of axes in the control rig itself, and then we'll have this working. 
So back in our control rig, I had to play with this a little bit just to get the right settings. So what we got to do is we need to expand out our X, our Y, and our Z here, and also here. And instead of connecting it up directly, I'm just going to hold Alt, break that. We got to connect up our X to the Z axis here, and then our Y also to the Y. That's just fine. And then our Z, this is kind of weird. We got to switch it to negative. So we got to multiply it by negative 1. So the B is going to be negative one and then connect it up to the X. And basically this is happening because our control rotation does not match up to our bone rotation, but this should match them up. Compile, save, actually auto compiles on. We don't need to do that. Let's test again. All right. So now holding right click, I look up and he's actually looking up and I look to the right and he's actually looking to the right and I look to the left and I look down and his neck is actually turning down so far so good. But then we got an issue because if I use a channeled spell like our flamethrower ability, his neck is turned way too far in the direction that I'm aiming. Because what's happening here is our player's whole body is already turning fully in that direction. And then the head and the neck are also turning further in that direction. So let's adjust that. So we can go back into our animation graph. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make more space, drag out our spine rotation here a little bit. And we can get the variable spell casting standing still. And this we set up back in episode 27 with our flamethrower. And then if this is not true, so not Boolean, then if both those things are true, so we're not spell casting standing still, and the right mouse button is active. So I'll hook this up here, hook up the knot right there, and then connect this up here. Just gonna move this into position right above spine rotation up here. So then what's going to happen here is if we are using a spell casting standing still animation, then we're not going to change our head and neck via the control rig. Compile and save and let's test again. All right, flamethrower. Yeah, working just fine with my aiming and then I disable it and I can still look in the directions that I'm aiming. So far so good. So for the rest of this episode, we're just going to spend the time optimizing some setup that we originally put in place back in episode 30, the fireball episode. And so if you're not interested in that, feel free to skip right over it. But back in episode 30, what we did is we set up two bones to be able to turn in whatever direction the player was casting the fireball. And we did that if we go back into our anim graph state machines in the locomotion state machine. We did that in the idle and the walk run. So I'm going to start with idle. We had these two nodes here, transform, modify bone, spine 01, spine 02. And it occurred to me, now that we have this nice control rig, why do we need to do that in here? We can just take that same setup and apply it to our spine bones directly in the control rig. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to delete out this and I'm going to connect it up directly here. And I'm also going to go back into our walk run animation and I'll do the same exact thing. We're basically simplifying this considerably and I'll connect this up here, compile and save that. And then let's go back into our head and neck control rig. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add two additional offset transforms here for our spine bones. But the other thing I noticed is that if we specifically do it for spine 01 and spine 02, then it's just the lower part of the back that's bending. And I think it looks more natural if we do it for spine 02 and spine 04 because those are kind of the middle bones in the back. And now back in episode 30 with the fireball episode, we actually couldn't even do that. We couldn't even do our spine 04 in that episode because if you remember for the fireball animation itself, we set the spine to blend from spine 03 up. But that's not an issue now with our control rig setup. And the reason it's not an issue, if I go back to our anim graph, is because the control rig blending is happening after our layered blend per bone. And this is where we get the anim montage for our fireball to play, just the upper body. And this is the really nice thing about control rig, especially in our anim graph here, because we might be doing a lot of different animations here, but we still might want to put on kind of that like final polish of what our character is actually doing on the screen. We might want to do that on top of whatever standard animations we're doing. So we can just put our control rigs at the very end of this whole chain of events, and then they can update the final pose. So back in our control rig for head and neck, and actually it's going to be part of the spine now too, but I'll just keep the name head and neck because really that's the intent of it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make some space. I'm going to copy both of these offset transform nodes. This one we're going to make spine 02, and the second one here we're going to make spine 04. And then I'll connect up the true here. I'll connect up this one to here. I just need to make a little bit more space for these three. Drag them out, drag these down, and make sure to not forget to connect up from rotator here to the rotation on this one and also the rotation on that one. And then the last final optimization here back in our ABP third person character, because the control rig is the last thing 
then we can go into our layer blend per bone and we don't need to actually blend this at spine 03 like we were doing in episode 30. We could blend this at our very first spine bone, so all of our upper body. So then this is spine 01 and it's just gonna look nicer when we're throwing our fireball or really any spell where we're only doing an upper body animation. So compile and save here and let's test this out. All right, so the first thing is to turn in whatever direction and turn down and we see our spine still turning a little bit. Yep, that looks good. Even when running, it's pretty cool. I can actually turn my head in that direction and then turn my head this way and turn the opposite direction. Kind of looks weird if I look down while running, but realistically, if you told your character to look down while running, this is what it would look like. Now for our fireball, if I aim straight, yeah, we see it blending kind of lower down closer to the pelvis. And I can also aim a little bit to the right and aim a little bit to the left and aim up and aim down and aim running. Yeah, it looks a little bit more natural when running. Might have to figure out what to do when he's standing still with the fireball. It doesn't look all that great when standing still, but we'll figure that out. So that concludes our episode for today. And for our next episode, we're finally, finally, finally getting into new abilities. And I've been looking forward to this for some time. So we now have our first air ability and I activate two on our keyboard and we got a sprint boost and a jump boost. So I hope to see you there.